Ladies and gentlemen, Jerry Petito. I'm not an addict, I'm just an ass. And in time, this too shall pass. I'm not an addict, I'm just an ass. Jerry Petito taught the class. I'm not an addict, I'm just an ass. Loves the answer, the greener grass. I'm not an addict, I'm just an ass. One day at a time, free at last. When you don't know just what to do. Just what to do, just what to do. If what you're feeling is really true. It's really true. Just keep your idea safe and sound. Safe and sound, safe and sound. That's exactly how change is found. Change is found, change is found. I'm not an addict, I'm just an ass. And in time, this too shall pass. I'm not an addict, I'm just an ass. Jerry Petito taught the class. I'm not an addict, I'm just an ass. Loves the answer, the greener grass. I'm not an addict, I'm just an ass. One day at a time, free at last. Hello, everyone. And welcome to the Jerry Petito Show. Everyone and anyone who knows me knows I am the author of I'm Not an Addict, I'm Just an Ass. I'd rather be a smartass than a dumbass. Because, guys, over 32 years ago, I was a dumbass. But today, 32 years later, I can honestly say now I'm a smartass. And, yes, the word ass is in the Bible at least 40 times, and it means donkey. And that's what I was. Thank you, God, because without God, I wouldn't have made it. I'm saying all that to say this. You know what, guys? We've all had the roughest few years of our lives, right? All over the world, not just here. And unfortunately, too many people didn't make it. And a lot didn't make it because of health reasons, and a lot did not make it because of addiction. So I'm a nutritional health coach. I'm also a recovery coach. All my services to you are free. Please, please reach out. I want everyone out there to know you are not alone. Someone is listening, okay? So please reach out to me. If you think my book can help someone, because I sure do, you can go right to Simon & Schuster's bookstore, Archway Publishing, BAM, Amazon, Barnes & Noble. You can go to my website, www.jerrypetito.com, and please subscribe to the Jerry Petito Show YouTube channel. Guys, listen to me. If you truly, truly, truly cannot afford my book, please, please reach out to me about that as well. I'm here to help you. I want to give a shout-out to a few of my sponsors. Okay, here we go. We have Paula Ann from Ablaze Entertainment and Freedom Rings Festival, helping survivors of human trafficking to live a life of normalcy. The Jerry Petito Show is also one of her sponsors, www.freedomringsfestival.com. Then we've got John Bishop, a.k.a. Johnny B. Singer, songwriter, host of the Entertainment Luncheon South, a nonprofit network created for the creative guys. His Facebook group page, Entertainment Lunch in South. He's a partner in the Joey D and Johnny B Rock and Oldies Band. They're amazing, and what they do for all the entertainers, they promote everyone, guys. And they do this luncheon, and let me tell you something, they don't make a penny. Okay, they bring everybody there, and it's incredible to network. Okay? Now we have Michael Zanman, singer, entertainer, performer. www.mzanman.com. The guy's off the charts. He's amazing. He's hysterical. He's so much fun. Guys, check him out. Michael Zanman. Okay? Michael Diamore, singer, songwriter, performer, entertainer, www.michaeldiamore.com. This guy is off the freaking charts, guys. Please check him out. I always say he's under Elvis, baby. And that's, listen, I don't usually say that, okay, because everybody knows I'm an Elvis girl. Um, But I had the honor of emceeing at Lead East this past year, and I'll be doing it again. For, for the Friday night, Michael Zaman opened for Michael D. Moore, and it was amazing. All right, so check them both out. And then last but certainly not least, John Munfordo, the man of many faces. I named him that. Singer, actor, celebrity impersonator, and tribute artist. He was given the title, guys, by a former Philadelphia mayor as the official Philadelphia Rocky impersonator. You can check him out at www.johnmonforto.com. He does over 30 amazing impressions. And let me tell you something, the Italian in me, my favorites, of course, is Rocky, The Godfather, and then Elvis, baby, okay? So having said all that, you know I bring it, right? Well, honey, I am bringing it again. All right, I've got these two jokers here with me. We've been having so much fun pre, you know, before we went live, okay? This is going to be an incredible show. And I want to, listen, I'm going to tell you what. Tim, I want you to properly introduce yourself and this guy because only you can introduce him the way he should be. (laughs) All right, let's do it. Well, well, that damn suit. No, okay. Uh, Yeah. 
Okay, my uh, my name's Tim McGarry. Uh, I'm a songwriter, singer. I've been I was in a band in uh, the uh, 83, 83 on Adam Records. We used to open it for Duran Duran, Depeche Mode, The Cure, Roxy Music. I mean, everyone under the sun. Uh, it was great. We were the, you know we thought we were the greatest opening band that ever lived. It was awesome, you know. But it was good. you know we did we did like you know five or twenty five thousand seaters for like you know two years in a row. It was great. And I've been writing in Nashville for a while. And uh, so my friend Mike Kenneman, who was the um, uh, tour manager manager of Johnny Van Zant Band and also like the whole Leonard Skinner family thing um, he uh, introduced me to Robbie and said hey listen you know like this Robbie's you know he's, he's a, a songwriter and he's a phenomenal guitar player and I want you to start writing songs with him so uh, Robert was uh, the guitar player for Johnny Van Zant for uh, you know 16 years seven uh, wrote most of the songs um, for of seven albums on major labels toured all over the world Opened up for everybody you could imagine from, you know, Outlaws, uh, 38 Spe I mean, everyone. You know, they were like, you know, and uh, had a great career. So the thing is, for us, is like, you know, we just love the music. And, um, you know, and uh, Robbie came down and we uh, we uh, put some stuff together. And uh, this is my first, actually, album problem that I, I've done a lot of singles in my studio, but not a whole album. And uh, it was so organic. It was just... You know, you know, you know, the songs just sort of came out. You know, we co-wrote these things, and you know, and, and the, the lyrics just like you know, sort of came uh, easily. Um, and uh, guitar playing was really good. And and I think the thing is, I think what he felt good is there was I wasn't pressuring him. Like you know, I was just basically letting him, you know, do his thing. And we sort of you know a little bit of direction from me, but like mostly like you know. And then he knew like when we had the like the, the beautiful the beautiful guitar lead, we go like, okay, you know, we're that's it. We, he, he, we both looked at each other and go like, yeah, that'll be the one. <laughs> so, and, uh, so it's great. And, uh, he's a great guy, you know what I mean? Um, and, uh, we, you know, we become good friends. I call him every morning to wake him up, as he'll tell you. <laughs> like, what? Like, uh, like a yeah. nurse. <laughs> like a nurse. Well, the thing is, I always got this things going. I mean, I, we, I'm doing yeah. all the promotion here. You know, yeah. I'm doing a lot of stuff at my house, and when, every time I get some good news and stuff, you know, we've we've already sold about 600 of the albums already um, in the first two months, which is great. You know, we're getting played all over the world. You know, Australia, uh, South Africa, Scotland, um, uh, you know, England. Uh, 700 stations. Are, are, this guy that's put us down. There's 700 stations playing our stuff now, so things are moving. And you know, and the thing is, what I think what we're thinking about is. We were looking at like had that sort of Southern rock, Tom Petty, uh, Americana, you know what I mean, and a little bit of country in there. That whole, you know, and taking those those things that we that we love in music and putting it together on a record, and I think it came out okay. Amen. How's that? That sounds great. That was a good story, Tim. So now tell us <laughs> a little bit. Did you about make any you? of that? Did you make all that up? Well, <laughs> <laughs> How much did you pay him? That's right. Oh. A lot, obviously. <laughs> I, I expect a check. Yeah, okay. Woo, that was pretty good. Now it's your I, turn. Now it's, your it's turn. my turn. Do I do I need to talk about Tim? So yeah, I want you to talk I, a little yeah, bit about know, Tim, I but I, then yeah. I want you to talk a little bit about you as well. All right. Well, I'll. Uh, I come from. Uh, even though I retired to another place, I uh, lived most of my life in Jacksonville, Florida. Okay. Um, I actually moved there out of college to play music and was fortunate enough to meet Johnny and uh, and Ronnie and Donnie and uh, the whole family and they actually saw me play and uh, that's how I got in the band and uh, like Tim says I, I toured all over the world I've played with some great producers uh, recorded with Al Cooper Kevin Ellison from Journey uh, of course Al did uh, the first two Skinner records and uh, he also did the first two records that we did so I also did uh, an album with Rodney Mills, which I have not mentioned in the past. Rodney's well known in the industry. He's recorded all the and produced all the 38 special records. Mm -hmm. So he's uh, well known in the industry, but people don't know him that well. Um, and so, and Johnny, uh, Johnny and I have stayed in touch and we're still good friends. And uh, what happened was uh, the band was doing well in the 90s and uh, the offer for to sing for Skinner was just too much to pass up. And uh, so, you know, uh, it was, there was some uh, melancholy and there was some uh, bitterness, but that's too long ago. And, you know, him and I get along so well that 
Oh, good. You know, I, I, as we were recording this album, we would send him songs. Mm. And, uh, you know, he's very good about giving feedback, whether it's good or bad. So, mm -hmm. and, and that's kind of that story, part of the story. Now, for me, I did another C, uh, a CD before this one that I did on my own, wrote all the songs, all the lyrics, played a lot of the instruments, did it in a big time studio in Atlanta. Uh, produced it myself, spent a lot of money. Uh, it did not sell. Mm. I, uh, it just wasn't that good lyrically. And uh, so what happened was, though, uh, my friend Mike, as Tim says, uh, from Skinner days, he came and listened to the uh, listening party. And he pulled me aside and said, uh, well, this is uh, not good. <laughs> this is not our record this is the not yeah, this is mine my first yeah, yeah, solo yeah. and he said he uh yep. he said but but i want you to come to nashville i'll hook you up with some writers and we'll we'll start working on you writing better songs and make another record how long and ago about wait how long ago was that about that was 2016 okay continue and so i made the cd uh put a band together played some not very much and the records did not do well at all, as as uh, Mike said it wouldn't. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so I did the Nashville thing. I went back and forth several times. Tim came to my house a bunch of times, and that's how I met him. And out of all the writers I had written with in Nashville, I told Mike that if, if I ever had the chance, I would like to record with Tim because I think we could make a good record. Right. And so when we wrote some songs and got enough together to do it, I, uh, I only went, we only went, got together in his studio to, to see how it would go. You know, we, we wrote a couple of songs, we recorded them, and then we looked at each other and went, whoa, man, we need to keep going here. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's what we do. We just kept, I kept going back and forth. We, we've written, you know, eight or nine songs. We picked the seven best and uh, that's how we got here. And so, you know, without, it's like a, it's almost like to me, it's this trail that you're following and it goes down, it goes up, it goes down, it goes up. And, and finally for me, it went up because I met Tim and to, together we're kind of a, a force because I can, uh, I can listen to what a producer wants and I can give them what they want. And, and I don't even know that I can half the time, but with Tim, he definitely can pull things out of me that nobody else ever did. It makes me uh, not play when I really want to play. <laughs> yeah, no shredding, no. Fast hands, so to speak. <laughs> I mean, he's a, you know, he can shred like the best of them. But what, what, what we did, we worked on this one. We were like thinking like, you know, um, that's all fun. But the thing is, on, when the reality... Nobody cares. <laughs> Well, the thing is, like, no one can remember that lead, you know what I mean? But when no. you do, like, a smart thing that, like, you know, starts a somewhere lot of and works to someone. And so we, you know, and we worked in that. And the thing is, he really did have it in him. Just I, I had, like, a little bit of direction. And then he just, like, and then he started doing it. He's like, wow, I like it. <laughs> I, can, I was you know? like, wow, I can play slow. <laughs> yeah. And his, his friends, when he first saw that, who's playing guitar? That's yeah. me. What? That's bad. <laughs> They're like, who is that guy? So that's me. That's not you. No, Listen, no. this is you. Uh huh. Uh huh. No, no, it's not me anymore. <laughs> yeah. So, but the thing is, like you know, like you say, you know, you, there's something about energy in the room. You know, when you get two people like that. And the great thing is, I have my studio, so there was no pressure of like you know time. You know, like we had there was no some pressure. Time, so we could so we just so we had fun and. You know, see, some, sometimes, like, you know, you go to producers, and if they get, like, you know, they get on you or, like, stuff like that, you don't get the best out of somebody. You know what I mean? You just, you sort of browbeat them, and then it's like, then all yeah. of a sudden, they, cl okay. they close down. For me, I do the other, I do the other way. I, I'm more of in, like, you know, but we had one thing we'd say, it was something like, that was unfortunate. <laughs> 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 that was the that was the code word. Mm, yeah, that was unfortunate, man. Yeah, and that, yeah, and that would happen. I would play something. I would be out of breath, and I'd go, "Man, that was great." And you go, "That's unfortunate, right oh there." Oh my god, that's so funny. Waste of time is what that was. What made but, you guys tell us about the title? Oh, that's an interesting story too. Go ahead, Tim. I, I'm in 
Well, we just, you know, we get seven songs, and I, and I had this thing about, you know, um, the lucky number seven, and, and uh, I was thinking of, like, and you see the covers, that's the old cigarette girls, like, in the 30s and 40s and stuff like that. Yeah, like, we just so updated her. We just updated her a little bit, and that had her the, for, the, you know, 2024. So, um, but I don't know, it just, you know, it just seemed like I felt that sometimes when you get together, you know, like people say, like, where the songs come from, and sometimes... I swear, it's like a gift, like from above. I mean, it is. They, it it is. just things just mm-hmm. come and and like you know, and uh, and for me and, and Robbie and I think we'd say, he'd probably say the same thing. But you know, I love to hear music that gets my lyric head going. Sometimes I'll have a phrase in my head already, but like that was you know, but um, it's mostly like that. But yeah, these and then and it was funny. I listened. I was just listening. I haven't listened to him in a couple of days. I sort of you know, sometimes I just don't listen to him for a while. And yeah. then I put him on. I go, wow, these really were. Where'd that come from? You know, like, yeah. how, you know, that kind of stuff. And, um, but, you know, uh, I guess the thing is like, you know, there's a, there's an energy that happens and when, and it, when it works, it works. I mean, I've done some co-writes that it doesn't work, you know, it's uh-huh. like, you know, you know, that it's like, it's yeah. so, so painful. It's like, uh, you know, and, uh, and it's like, you know, like, Hey, it was really fun for a with that. And you just don't do it again, you know, because, yeah. or sometimes you try one more time and then if it's like two times like torture, then it's like, okay. I'm not doing that to myself anymore. But then when it works, it's fun. You know, it's like we yeah. had fun. We were like, we're creating, we're putting things down. The vocals in, like, oh, I really like that guitar part. I like that vocal. You know, and like, you know, I like the lyrics. Like, I love the lyric on "When Love Comes Around." Your love, your love is like your love um, can be a ghost that haunts you at night. Now, right away, people are like going, "What?" Ooh. You know, it's like it's like it's sort of an interesting line to start with. You know what I mean? And that was something I was taught in Nashville. Like, start with something that's sort of like. Whoa! What what did he say? Your love can be a ghost that haunts you at night, and you know. And I wrote that song, I guess, because I have a lot of friends and w- older women that don't have partners, uh, like in their thirties, forties, fifties, and sixties. Older women in their thirties. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, take that back. All right, well, hit, ooh, say fifties, sixties, and up, not thirties and forties. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. Well, I mean, but there's a lot of ones. I'm just saying, say like you know, forty, fifty, and sixty, whatever. But they, it's hard for them to find partners. And the whole, the whole crest of the song, the chorus, is like, it always comes easy when it's right from the start. And like a stray bullet, right to your, you know, goes right to your heart. You didn't see it coming, but you're ready for it now, because somehow, some way, love comes around. And so that's, and the stray bullet thing is like just that's just a metaphor of like you know, like the, so many times when people like find somebody, they weren't looking. It wasn't. It just was like by accident. You know, I wasn't looking for somebody. I wasn't, you know, on Tinder or whatever, you know, those, those sites are. You know, it's like, no. I mean, you know, it's like, um, you know, just all of a sudden, like, this person shows up and it's the right, it's right. You know, it's like, because that happened to me. That's what I say. Um, The way I met my wife, my uh, my friend worked at a restaurant as a kid as a busboy. And so we were down there. We had a band going. Uh, this is in Yardley, Pennsylvania. And the guy that owned the Yardley Inn, uh, he was Mother's Day, and it was like really busy. And they and the cook called out, so he, he frantically said, "Look, I, I need somebody to, to to cook. I don't I don't have anybody." The guy called out; he's really sick. So and I said, "Do you know anybody?" And I and, and I know I cook, so I said, yeah, I can do that. I can do broiler or sauté. What do you need? And he goes, "Well, I need a broiler guy. Got it." And my wife was waiting tables that night, so you know every. Um, uh, every time, like she walked away, she always said, "Like, what attracted you?" And I go, "Well, every time you walked away, you know, <laughs> bump up a dump, you know, like I loved it, and I was like, I was in love already, you know." And then we went out that night. She put her hair down, and I called my mom up like two weeks later. I said, "I met an angel, and we've never been apart. I mean, we're married forty-four years in November, That's and beautiful. you know, we've been together since nineteen seventy-nine, and we still like each other." So now, are you married? Who, me? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Glad you put that that point up. <laughs> no. Okay. No. All right. So now I have a question for both of you before we play your first song. Right. Um, I always read a poem, and I'm going to be reading this poem soon. I usually wait till the end, but I'm not because of what you guys said about it came from up above, your gifts, and this and that. It's almost like you talked about this poem. But okay, so now hold that thought for a minute. I want to ask you guys a question, right? I want to ask you guys a question before we play your first song. Um, So I'm a poet. And I could be driving in a car, and all of a sudden something pops into my head. I got to pull over and write it down. I'm like, okay, I got to start writing with this. Does that happen to you guys? 
Yes. 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 That's yes. what songwriters do. It's amazing. Same right? thing. It just I, like I, comes to you. Yeah. I can, I, I can never turn it off. Right. Never. And I, I don't never. want I to. Just, so now. I don't want to. Do you guys just, I mean, write the songs together? Yeah. Both. Um, yeah. I mean, I do, Both. I mean I, I, he does single. I do solo. You know, I have like, because I have a whole other thing of like, you know, my songs that I, that I wrote for like movies and TV stuff. And, you know, and then I have, then I have project, but this, you know, this is our project together, your project, and, you know, okay, and, together. and, um, and it worked. Okay, yeah. cool. So, all right, yeah. we're going to play one of your songs. We have, I think like four of them, but let's play one and then we're going to talk about the song. Okay, guys. Got it. Okay. And my producer's back there rocking, okay? I'm cracking up <laughs> laughing at him, all right? And he, listen, he's young. He's in his 40s, all right? And he's rocking to your music. Oh, hey. So Good. I want to just say this to both of you. So seven is my favorite number because I was born on March 7th. And we have oh. a deli in, in our town in Hamilton called the Lucky Seven Deli. All right? What? Pre- yeah, in our town in Hamilton. I'll take a photo of it. I'll pass by it this wow. week. And I'll send it to nice. you, okay? But there is, I think, has the seven... Yours says the word, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that that's really cool. So, all right. So I want both of you to give your input. Come on, Paul. You could talk too, baby, all right? I mean, Robert. Um, <laughs> so tell us about this song. Uh, uh, this song's interesting because uh, I've made a lot of records, but I've never played slide guitar before. Oh. Yeah. Uh, 
I mean, I play in my bedroom, but um, in the Johnny Van Zandt band, the other guitar player was the slide player. Yeah. And so I would, I was learning from him, but I never really would play in front of him because he was so good. Yeah, we were we were doing this uh, song, and we're doing some leads, and I just said, you know, we've been going through them, and I said, nah, it's, it's just not angry enough. You know, we need something like, you know, like, Meh! like, and so I go, you play slide, and he goes, well, sort of. And he did it, and he killed it. It was like, dude, you're a slide player. <laughs> You've always been a slide player. You know, just to have a chance to bid out a record. But, like, I thought that was a great slide, but, you know, it was yeah. like, that thing it's just good. rocks, you know. It's, and it really, that's what that song needed. You know, it needed yeah. the slide. And it worked out so well in that song. Oh, yeah. I, I, I think, did a, a dozen takes with regular league playing on that song and nothing. Unfortunate. It, just, it, just, unfortunate. it was unfortunate every time. Unfortunate. <laughs> unfortunate. Unfortunate. I love that. Unfortunate. So, all right. Hey, all right. So I have a question for each one of you. All right. So okay. Tim, start with you. Um, let everyone know. Like you sing, you play instruments. Like what do you do? Me? No, yeah. Tim first. Tim yeah, first. Oh, oh, yeah. I, yeah, I play guitar. I pl I sing. You know, I produce. You know, um, I've been really working on the, my studio chops. But you know, the thing is too. I also have my friend Ray Nesbitt. Um, who is a really good mixer. Like, so after I got this down to a certain level, I knew that, like, I needed, like, you know, the next, you know, somebody that's even more, you know, uh, the equipment he has and something like that. So we uh, basically had him, uh, like, sort of tweak some stuff here and there. Didn't have to do a lot, you know, but just okay. a little bit. And then um, we had drummers like Daryl Nutt and, and David Johnson, the bass player and the drummer, that's do great. And, and he helped mix it and master it. And uh, so, uh, I mean, I, but I'm, my thing is, like, uh, songwriting and lyrics you know i love lyrics and you know i mean this song is just sort of a funny i mean this it's a great song to drive down the road with you know kicking down the road you know like you know what i mean like you know i mean it's just it's like yeah you go, it's great for that and um so and i just thought like it was like funny because you know i was like how many guitar players like you know what do you call a musician that leaves his girlfriend homeless right oh, so, God. <laughs> okay here we go did you ever take lessons Tim, did you take musical lessons, guitar lessons, singing lessons? Me? Yeah. No, no, no. never. Oh, well, I did. I know. I uh, I did take some guitar lessons a little bit. Uh, basically, I was a bass player. I mean, I, I started up like when I was um with the Rescue and Neighbors and Allies, those bands in the '80s and stuff like that. What happened um, when I was like 17? There was a band, and they need, and they, I was a drummer, and they go, well, "We need a bass player. You play bass?" And I go, "Sure." Now, I, I had acoustic guitar, so I knew E, A, D, G, you know, so, okay, those are the four strings, and my, and this is, you're going to laugh at this, so my friend's grandfather won a cheap uh, Japanese electric guitar at Palisade Park. Okay, music, Palisade, right? yeah. But darts in the balloon, so we, we bring the guitar home, we take a hacksaw, we take the top two nuts off, bass strings, bass player. <laughs> That was it. That was my first wow. bass. So and then cool. I played bass for 20 years. That's yeah, so, so cool. yeah. Okay, but, so, Robert, tell us about you. Uh, I, uh, I, I mostly just play guitar, though I, uh, I really didn't learn really how to play until I got to college. Okay. Uh, played in an orchestra, uh, musicals, Hello, Dolly, uh, Maine, Oklahoma. Uh, but it really set me up to uh, be a lead player because I sat behind the violin players. Oh. And, and I was uh, always enthralled by the speed and the dexterity, you know, no frets, just, oh. a, just a bow, and it was just note for note all the time. And so that's, what I, that's where I learned how to be accurate when okay. you play. If you're going to play it, play it right. Play it accurate. Or don't play it, you know, and... And so one of the things, the biggest thing I got out of college was music theory, which really helps in songwriting as far as moving things along. Okay. Where if the song's going in one direction, uh, musically you can change it by whether you modulate or you go, or you modulate up, you modulate a whole step, half step, you uh, modulate a whole step or even a step and a half to a minor chord or a diminished chord, those kinds of things that you learn in school. So, but as far as playing guitar, no, as a kid, I listened to uh, Hendrix and um, Jimmy Page and, and guys around me, 
you know, definitely when I got to Jacksonville, I was exposed to uh, all the guys in 38 Special, guys in Molly Hatchet, uh, my own band, and uh, there were guitar players on every corner. And you, you, if you weren't good, you, you could be really good and still not even get noticed. I don't know what the formula was and how I arrived there and got noticed, but I'm sure I wasn't any better than anybody else. Interesting. But I, I had uh, curly blonde hair and I was pretty and I could play a Les Paul and, and that's what Ronnie Van Zandt noticed about me. So, that's so and that's cool. how I got in Johnny's band. So, uh, it's like you say, like Tim says, it's a, sometimes it's a gift from God. It's almost like God follows me around sometimes going, okay, go here, go there, go here. Oh gosh, yes. Cause I, without Tim, I wouldn't be sitting here doing this. I've been retired for a while. So I, I would be doing other things other than this, but I'm back doing this and I, I, I'm not going to stop for sure. This time I'm going to, we're all ready to make another record. So mm -hmm. we'll, we'll call this. Ready. Well, yeah. you know, I want to share this with you. I always say I was born too late. Okay. And I don't have a mm -hmm. problem. Same age. I'm 63. I was born in 61 and all the incredible oldies hits, almost every hit they'll say, this became famous in 61. You know what I mean? And I'm like, oh my God, so 60, 61, 60. And I was like, and they're my, that's my music. But I always say I'm an oldies do up Elvis girl, but you can't take the rock and roll out of me. I've been to Led Zeppelin, Foreigner, Foghat. I mean, I've been to all the concerts, Jethro Tull, right? You cannot take the rocker out of me. So right. I love, I love all music and I love this music. And, you know, what I want to thank you guys for is you're not afraid to say the God word. And I love that yeah. about both of you. And yeah. I want to read this poem now because there's a lot of people, whenever they see my interviews, I get messages and they're, Jerry, I wish I could sing like your guests. I always wanted to sing. I wish I could write like you. I wish I could do, you know, and I try to tell everybody, everyone has something to offer because God didn't just pick certain people to do certain things. He gives everybody a gift, but right. we have to find it inside of us, right? And we have to say, we're going to utilize it and we're going to give back to God by sharing it. So I wrote this poem and it's called Utilizing Gifts and Talents. And I want to read this. And you know what? What you guys are doing is amazing because you're giving back, you know? And, and you know, I don't want to ever hear that you know, Robert, you retired because listen, <laughs> I don't want to hear it. You know why? Because listen, you're amazing. And, and Tim, what you're doing is amazing and keep bothering him. Okay. I don't care. Wake him up every day and tell him you're not stopping. <laughs> so oh, the two of you together are incredible. So let me read this poem. It's called utilizing gifts and talents. Okay. We are born with talents. We are born with drive, with different gifts to help us thrive. I knew early on I was born to draw and paint, to also write poetry, and to talk without restraint. Our gifts and talents should all be used. God's gift to us not be abused. We can go far in life for sure using our gifts to go on tour, like these two guys. All our talents should be used to create ourselves and more, but then our jobs to share them, to even up the score. You see, in life, what's needed is not just for ourselves. Once our gifts are mastered, take them off the shelves. A living we can make by spreading them around, not just for the money, but to spread a peaceful sound. Don't take for granted the gifts you're given. Go out and spread the joy. Our gifts are not to be held back for us to self-destroy. Put your efforts forth. Do not hesitate. All your talents, my friend, are never second rate. Never hold them back or you will surely die. Maybe not in body, but your soul will cry. Our gifts were made to share, our talents made to soar. Go through life enlightened, and then you can roar. Be proud of who you are. Be happy you're alive. Once again, my friend, your gifts will help you thrive. Put, you by putting efforts forth, guys, not keeping them at bay. Tim and Robert, baby, your names will live forever, forever <laughs> and a day. So go through life Amen. excited for Amen. what you sure That's can good. give. To yourself and others is our reason to live. Our grave will be quite lonely, but your legacy lives on. So make sure people smile with the breaking dawn. And that's what you guys are doing. You're oh, making thanks. everybody yeah. smile. Well, we just, I, you know, I just, we just, I love what music does. I love what music does. I mean, it does just brings people together. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, I, yeah. I also, you know, I also do that thing too, the songs of love where I write songs with, for kids that have cancer and do <sighs> things, bad diseases and stuff. So I just finished too. 
they usually send me about three, you no, know, two to three a month, or and or sometimes four. But uh, and they give me all their their history and their you know their pets and their food and their favorite stuff and their books and the movies. And then what I do is I write them a personal single for them, and then like they send it to them. It's really cool. So yeah, it's I've cool. Been that, I've been doing that for a while. You know what I mean? And you know, just uh, I, I think music. Like I remember my mom was like she was a Alzheimer's patient. You know, she passed away when she was ninety. My dad too. Go ahead. And th- and the thing is. You know, she'd have a she'd hard had a hard time talking, but when when we go into the and this guy would play music and those songs, she could sing every lyric. That's right. Uh, she right. Was, yeah. and she it, that other part of the brain opens yeah. up, and that's what music does. I mean, like I tell them all the time, like you know, we, you know, Robbie and I would both played some big crowds. You know, you you, you get twenty five, fifty thousand people, all different races, religions, sexual identities, blah blah blah. But when the music comes on, everyone is one. That oh, is if that is powerful. If that's not powerful, if that's not spiritual, what is that brings all those people together at one time and this enjoying the music and digging it? I mean, that's amazing. Tim, so. I want to share something with you. So you brought up your mom with Alzheimer's, my dad as well, okay, in his late 80s. He, d- he passed away. And we were in the car one time, and he was in, like, the mid-stages of it, so I could still bring him and get him something to eat and, you know, that kind of right. thing. Right, right. And he didn't know what to talk about. He couldn't talk about anything really, right? But as soon as I put on an Italian song, he would sing it. We would bring, <laughs> wow. I would bring yeah. people into a lot of the nursing homes here, even Santa's, singing Santa's, whatever. Right. These people would grab my arms that couldn't even lift their heads when the music started to try to <laughs> do this. Yeah, yeah. And I always yeah. tell everybody, you have a six-month-old baby in a bouncy. You put music right. on, that baby's going to bounce. So it's yeah. innate in us. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Music saves yeah. the world. It does. You know? I mean, it's so... There's so many things it does, like, I mean, just, just the spiritual part of it and the sound part. But, like, if you think about, like, for kids learning music, you know, the concentration, uh, the commitment to do it, yeah. uh, the sonic, the, the science of sonic, you know, how it works. I mean, there's so many things and beats. I mean, it does so much for the brain. It's so yeah. good. I mean, you know, a lot of times you have people like, well, it should just be math and English. And, you know, music is needs to be a part of our everything. You're right. Okay, you're right. Listen. I'm an artist. I went to art school in New York. I grew up in Long Island City, New York. We moved to New Jersey when I was only 12, okay? And I went back to New York to art school, School of Visual Arts in 79. And my Italian father was going crazy, pulling his hair out of his head. He paid for it, let me go. But he's like, I want to get you a beauty salon. You need to do that. That's what my sisters have done. They, you know, people don't understand the people that have the arts in them, you know, unless they have the arts in them, you know, it's amazing. That's right. Yeah. So yeah. let's play oh. one more of your songs, uh, and right. then we're going to talk about this song, okay? Okay. okay. Here we go. Let's just... Try to 
All right, that was really cool, guys. Come on, talk about it, baby. Talk about it. Well, uh, go ahead. That was, uh, man, I hear that lead on the end, and I, uh, I think of uh, how many notes I didn't play. Oh. <laughs> I, I, I love the chorus, though. It's like, we're going to live this life. Too. Don't believe that lie that you're never good enough. I mean, that's the whole point of that song. That is. It's like, you know, it's like. Everybody puts you down. You know, um, it's like, you know, it's like, and it's like, the moon don't shine without the sun. It ain't ready. You know, it's not done to the work. You know, the work is done. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like, you got to do some work, but like everyone's sort of like, you can, you work. I guess the thing is the connection of the different things. Like, you know, you don't think this happens unless this happens. Sometimes you need people around you and things like that. And that's the whole thing. But the whole point of that song is just like, you know, I'm going to live this life and I'm not going to believe that lie that I'm not good enough. And I don't want anybody to think that because where you are right now, you're in the space you're supposed to be. Yes. You know what I mean? And live in the present, you know, and, you know, that that's basically, you know, I guess that's how the song, but it's fun though. It was that one, like the pre-chorus, like, you know, with that, right. When I said, I had Robert try this thing. I go, I go, and he's like, and I really go, just try it. <laughs> so, yeah. And he's he like, trying to describe it, and what you hear is not what he was describing. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so but, but, but tell us, Robert, tell us what but, was he really saying? <laughs> yeah, that was like, uh, he says, I need this thing here that goes, you know, like, really comes across me. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> So I just started messing around with it, and and I just did it by mistake, really. And you go, oh, that's it. Oh. Okay. <laughs> and 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 what do you say now? Well, it, works. Uh, it works. It, it works. works. <laughs> it works. See. It works. So yeah. I have a question for both of you before we play the third song. Mm -hmm. All right. So all right, Robert, we'll start with you with this question. Um, you've mentioned a few people that influenced you, you know, but when you were growing up, let's go back. When you were younger, uh, who influenced you then in the music industry? Who did you love listening to? Well, I'm a big Beatles fan. Oh, all right. Go ahead. Well, I think you can hear that in uh, my playing and uh, the melodies, especially when, and Tim loves them too, because there's something about the Beatles songs, the way they go back and forth from a major to a minor to a major seventh. It's mm -hmm. just so cool. You can't, they were just in that zone that uh, five, six year window where everything they wrote turned to gold. Mm. And uh, I well, just... I just heard blah, blah, blah with that zone five, seven thing, but continue. <laughs> but I get what you're saying. <laughs> I just I just think for probably as a kid, definitely the Beatles, yep. but also the Rolling Stones. Of course, because they were so bad. I mean, they were raunchy. They were they weren't they weren't particularly tight as a band they were but they were rock stars for sure the way they dressed yeah. whereas the the beatles all wore that same suit mm -hmm. and everything and all business like but the rolling stones were like it's like the clowns getting out of the car they just fall out <laughs> on the stage and yeah man yeah. let's play <laughs> and can you imagine at that time when i was a kid and then everybody else in the 60s seeing those guys on Ed Sullivan was like, now that's what I want to do. I want to dress like that and I want to play guitar. Because the Beatles made me want to play, but the Rolling Stones made me want to play on stage. <laughs> All right. So now before we before we get to Tim with the same question, so think about that, Tim. So Robert, who have you met in the industry that you've always wanted to meet and who have you never gotten to meet that you wish you could have? Well, I got to meet uh, all the guys in Journey. Yep. That was probably big on my bucket list. Steve Perry sang vocals on my second record uh, with Johnny Van Zant. Crazy. Um, I would say also the singer from uh, Foreigner. Okay. I went to see them so many times. Okay, go ahead. Such a great kid. And he, uh, he was so nice. He's from Rochester, I think, or Syracuse, New York. And uh, he's he's New Yorker. A New Yorker, baby. But when he sings, you know, it's just golden. Yeah. He's he had such a gift, golden voice, and so modest and so lost shucks. 
You know, I, I don't know. I'm just, I just sing. I don't, you know. And Mick Jones, that man's from England. They found him uh, off of a little cassette tape. Oh. And when they were auditioning singers for the band, he, his voice just popped out. And Mick Jones said, that's him. Foreigner was my very first concert. I was 17. Also, as a guitar player, though, my biggest uh, uh, hangout was Billy Gibbons. Okay. ZZ Top. Uh, I uh, went to them too. Go ahead. <laughs> really good, really great human being and uh, totally modest. And even though he's flamboyant and all that underneath, he's just he's just a boy from Texas. So. Who haven't you gotten to meet that you wish you could have? Well, I did meet Stevie Ray Vaughan, but I didn't get to hang with him that much because actually the day that he died, when he got killed, that helicopter that he got on, Johnny was supposed to get on that same helicopter. We were playing that same festival. And Johnny, being like he was about airplanes, he didn't get on that plane, the helicopter. And so, and then we heard, I mean, we, we'd already played and already left. But he, he was he was trying to talk Johnny to come and play with him or get on the plane and go with him because it was 500 miles to where we were going. And he thought about it. He was going to do it. But uh, me and I think uh, the road manager were like, eh, I don't know, man. We don't, we don't normally do that, so let's don't do that. And, you know, just hindsight, we wasn't even thinking about what if the guy crashes. We just didn't think it was a good idea. But that guy, I hung with him backstage and saw him play a little bit as he warmed up. But him and Neil Sean from Journey were always so nice to me that, you know, a lot of people think these guys are a bunch of pompous asses. No, I don't. They're wrong. Most most of the guitar players that I met that are famous, they are very normal guys. Yes. They don't, the money has not, they don't do it for the money at that stage. I no, agree. No, no man. And Tim and I, even though we may not have the money that they do, we don't do this for money. No. Yeah. I do this for my soul. It keeps yeah. me young, keeps me alive. It's amazing. Listen, yeah. thank you for sharing what you just shared because that was priceless about the plane and all that. And the, this is what I love. See, and listen, trust me, I don't do this for the money either. Trust me on that. <laughs> okay? Um, yeah, this other guy didn't even show up. This is this is a, <laughs> this other guy didn't even show up. He's a bum. This is They're amazing. Bum. Like They're when bum. you guys tell me these stories and all, and, and I'm just like, this is so awesome. Now, Tim, yeah. I want you to answer the same question. So tell me, who have you met that you always <laughs> wanted to meet, and who did you never get the opportunity that wish you could have? Okay, well, probably the most famous person was David Bowie. Okay. Uh, we, we were pl we played in uh, CBGBs uh, with a guy named Robert Hell. We told Robert that we'd uh, we'd roadie for him and we'll play and we do a Thursday, Friday, Saturday night. We'll if we could open for you Thursday, Friday, Saturday night. We'll roadie for free and you can have the whole door. We won't even take any money. He's like, well, yeah, that's good to me. So, yeah. so we played Thursday night. You know, we get off the stage and 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 he's like, uh, you guys are like really good. What, you know, he wasn't expecting that. He thought we were going to be like, you know, the stupid roadie band. Wait, who said that to you? The, <laughs> the, um, uh, the, uh, um, uh, my, my brain's right. Did now. you get to meet but, David? Yeah, so what happened? Sorry, go ahead. Was, so we, so we go on Friday night and we had a guy from, um, uh, the, uh, what's it um, uh, band called Magazine, and so he said, and he was saying in our house, I'll do the roadie because David Bowie's out there and wants to meet you. So we sat down with David, well, you know, we, this is what I was drinking, but I had a couple of beers, and we're, and he's the nicest guy, he's talk, he looked at me, he goes like, you want to be a rock star, and I go, guilty, and uh, yeah, so, uh, and, um, but so nice, but at the end of the night, okay, this is how cool he was, all right, so he went, he's leaving, and he asked the doorman, what is that opening band getting paid, and they go, they're not. He took nine hundred dollars out of his wallet and paid us. All right, that's a beautiful story. Okay, let's give it to and, him, and, baby. And, 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 and everyone that I know that worked with him, I have friend, my, I have a good friend, Chad Sanford. He like wrote "Missing You" for John Waite and Stevie Nicks, and you know everyone. And uh, he was he was going out with Bette Midler that time, and uh, Bowie was doing "The Elephant Man" on Broadway. You remember that? Yes. And so he he was sequestered at uh, her house. So and at night they, they they you know they had records going and they talk about music. He's just an he's a good man, you know what yeah. I mean. And that's uh, like so. And then I guess the person that you know and I saw Jimi Hendrix live and um. But I meet I, the person I'd like to meet probably would be Peter Gabriel. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. um, and, and during my addiction there was a song that he did with um, uh, "Don't Give Up," 
Um, and uh, it was a, that song was a healer for me. Um, you know, we did that one with, uh, what's your one? Going Up That Hill. Going Up That Hill. Yeah, what's it? Kate Bush song? Kate Bush, yeah. Yeah. So he did he, he that with Kate Bush, you know, that, and that was like, and it's Don't Give Up. And that was like. Yeah, I forgot you know, he wrote that song, yeah. It was a beautiful song. So, and that's sort of a, like a theme song for me. Like, you know, I, I uh, yeah, I wish I'd, I'd meet him because he, I think he's really Maybe. cool. I know I really, the bass player, um, Tony Levin, you know what I mean? He was playing with um, uh, King Crimson. Tell I everyone his, who Peter Gabriel is. Peter Gabriel, you know, from Genesis yep. and Peter Gabriel, you know, like, you know, Shock Sledgehammer, Monkey, Sledgehammer yep. you know, Sledgehammer, lots of hits and stuff like that. But uh, Tony Levin was the bass player that he plays with. The big, tall guy, you know, his ball. He's an excellent, nicest guy ever. I bought his bass amp. He had a, and like, and he was working with um, Kim Crimson at the time. And he'd come see us play when I was with the Rescue. We were managed by the same people. So, I mean, like, and what I find is the people that are really famous, they're usually pretty good because they don't have to put on airs. They're there. They're beautiful. You know I, I saw mean? Genesis way back. You know, I was very young. But my favorite song is Follow You, Follow Me. By Genesis. Ali. That's the most beautiful oh, yeah. song, one of the most beautiful songs ever sung. Mm. Peter Gabriel's like really, he's he's amazing. I mean, if you ever see some, he did a a, a copy of the song Heroes okay. with an orchi- with the orchestra. I if never you, heard it. You sh- and when you hear that, I've got to I've got to check it out. It, it, your soul will be moved. Okay. I mean, it's like it's oh, it's so beautiful. It's just like you I've know. I've got to check then, it out. Yeah. So okay. all right. So now. Um, Producer, we have two left. Okay, let's play a third song and then we'll talk about it, guys. Okay. Okay. Oh, 
That was absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful, guys. Let's talk about it. Great song. Uh, I can't believe that's a song that I got to play on. I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes you just, uh, <clears throat> sometimes <clears throat> you get lightning in a bottle when it comes to songs. And that that whole movement, when it comes out of the second chorus into a whole different direction, is just uh, spur of the moment lightning is what it was. And, uh, it's cool. and the fact that I just, for <clears throat> the longest time, I would play that passage and I would shred way too much. I mean, because it was just, it was yeah. just right for a shredder. I know. tell, listen, please tell everyone what a shred really is. Okay, a shredder will just say somebody like Joe Satriani, Steve Vai, um, John <laughs> Petrucci. Yeah. Yeah. How many notes can you play in eight bars? Oh. <laughs> Yeah, and you know, if that was a heavy metal song with a little more heavier beat and guitar, the lead break would have been really fast and climbing from low to high and shredding. That's now I done. get it. Thank yeah. you. But it comes out to me much better when you just keep it simple and ride the chords the way they move. Mm -hmm. That's so. pretty cool. Yeah, And that's what the producer was trying to say the whole time, but I <laughs> I was not listening. <laughs> he listened. It was I unfortunate. Was, it is unfortunate. <laughs> no, no, it was. It, I I love that song. I, I, I just love too. the way it sounds. To me, it to me that sounds like a hit song. It just it is it a just hit song. That, it just it has that thing, and it you know, and, and it resonates with so many people. I mean, it's it's not like um, it can be for women and men. You know, anybody. But it's anybody. Just like, it's, it's just that thing, like you know, when it's right, it's right, and you know, and it might come out of nowhere. Like you might even know where that's from. Like where, and like all of a sudden that there's this person, and wow, we connect, and it's it, and it, when it's right, it's so right. It's easy. You know what I mean? I don't have to change. I don't have to be anything different than I am. If they, you know, they, you know, and that's and it's so good. I mean, I, you know, I have a lot of. You know, guys are like, well, I don't want to get, you know, married or, you know, get caught. I go, dude, you have it all backwards. I said, <laughs> when you find the right person, it's so great. You know what I mean? I can yeah. love I can love somebody with my whole heart. I can commit with them, commit to them with my whole being, and they do the same for me. And what happens is, because we've been through, as you know, like I lost a son in 2006. Yeah. I've been, you know, I was a drug addict, you know, uh, clean 38 years. I mean, we were homeless. I mean, we went through some stuff. And my daughters had a real tough time, and, you know, they went through a lot of stuff. So, But they're all doing great now. And we stuck it out together. And so that's the power of like, when you really, you know, you find that part of that's just right. It just works. And it's so, and I, I'm, I, I'm grateful every day. I thank God that I met her. You know what I mean? And like, I, like I, they go, what? 44 years. You're still, yeah. Because I, I don't want to be single. I, I like having, you know, I, some on my back, you know, like she, I have her back. She has mine. I mean, that's the thing. Like, you know, we have different strengths and, I mean, like, she's great with money. I'm terrible with money. I mean, like, you know, I put $1,000 in my pocket. By the end of the day, it's gone. I can't take it. <laughs> you can take all day? I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Give well, me an hour. Give me an yeah, hour. Yeah. Especially a musician. Just go to records. I mean, uh, Let's uh, buy a guitar. Yeah, buy a guitar. Uh, my yeah. daughter yeah. says, if I hit the lottery, she has to be in charge of the money because it would be gone in a day. I'd give it to everybody. Yes, Okay? Sir. I would, too. Yeah, I'd get a laugh yeah. of it away, for sure. So yeah. let me buy a so, so let me yeah, say yeah. something to you, Tim. I want everybody out there. A lot of you don't know his story, but he just told a little bit of it, okay? So when you look at someone like Tim who went through everything he went through, and look where he is now, and not only is he smiling, he's giving it to God, and he's making everybody out there smile. So there's hope for everybody, okay? So yes. anyone who's yeah. listening that feels like there's no hope, I'm here to tell you there is, all yeah, right? I mean, that's, I'm grateful that I had it I was an, as an addict I mean everyone goes like what and I go yeah because if I didn't go through that experience I couldn't help a lot of other people I because agree. like number one they wouldn't believe me because well you know what how does he know I know two rehabs yeah. you know, <clears throat> that, that, that you know what I mean I was powerless I was 50 pounds lighter my liver was going I was getting bum tan what we used to call it you know I mean I was bad I was hallucinating I mean it's just it was awful what was and, that bump tan yeah, yeah, yeah. What's I mean, that bump tan? 
A bum tan. It's like when your liver starts going, you get a little yellow. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, and so, and I mean, I, I, I was, I was in another band, and we, and I wrote a song. Ooh. It got us a, a small deal. A first writer refusal gave us ten grand. And as soon as they got the money, they kicked me out of the band because I was, I was that bad, you know. So I mean, and and I, and these, the guy, one of the guys, is still my best friend, but I deserved it. I was fried. So, but the thing is, and then also being that, like when somebody starts telling me some stuff, and you go like, that's a bunch of bull. You know what I mean? Like I know right. we, you know, uh, you're you're trying to fool me. Like, like it wasn't no. their fault. It wasn't yeah. their fault. I was yeah. a drug addict, but it wasn't my fault. <laughs> yeah, I mean the thing is, like I, you know, the thing is, most most addicts are usually nice people. They're not like yeah. evil, bad. You know, they're like I agree, they're, I agree. They're, but they're ca- they're caught up, and <clears throat> you know what I mean. It's just, and then and it doesn't have to be just drugs. It's food. I mean, like oh you my know, gosh. I, you know, anything. Like, I, I worked in a facility that, like, you know, had, like, you know, these women that were, and they were, like, four, five, six hundred pounds and stuff, you know, and then mm-hmm. I had, and then I had, they were with the anorexics, so I had a lady that was 65 pounds, 65 pounds, I was like, I thought she was fat, I thought she was fat, and so I, and so I, I said, I feed her, and I'd have to, she tried to hide the mud and the food in her gums, I go, no, you chew that. And I'd make her, and I'd stay there until she swallowed it, and then we had to make sure she didn't, you know, get sick. I mean, it was hideous. So, so there's all kinds of addictions. But the thing is, like, when you know, once I went through that, like, I, it was funny that um, uh, one guy was talking about one time, like, you know, pain is a gift. And I go, well, and we wrote a song about that. But the reason, because you have to go through pain because it teaches to be empathetic. If you don't go through things sometimes that are hard. You, you 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 don't have empathy. You know people that don't go through, they don't get it. Like I don't know why they do that. I don't know how that how they. Feel. Oh yeah, but, that's. But if you, I hate when if, people say that. But when you've been no. through it, and you've been there, and you've experienced that, you you have empathy for those people, and that's yeah. what you need. Like you know what I mean? Like so, like you know, and and I will tell you, at my son's funeral, I had people come up, I had a couple people, and they said, "Hey man, remember me like ten years ago?" and you know, I was in the ambulance and I was all strung out. Well, I just want to tell you, I've been clean ever since. And I, I have a family now and I have a job and we have a house. And, you know, I mean, they come, you know, like, you know, like that kind of stuff. And if that doesn't sort of, you know, I mean, karma points, I guess. But like, and I, I never said like I did anything. I just put the spark, you know what I mean? Just to start it. They have to do it themselves. But at least somebody that like could understand and get it. And they looked at me, I go, listen. You know, 25 years back then, like 25 years ago, I was strung out on cocaine, freebasing, and now look what I have. And now I'm not. Still have teeth, still have hair. Yeah. <laughs> well, big plus. <laughs> so, in 2019, yeah. by the grace you, of God, you wouldn't you wouldn't be in my band if you didn't have any teeth. <laughs> in 2019, um, I was inducted into into Internet International Hall of Fame for radio host. Right. My daughter wow. did a speech. My daughter wrote a speech. I was crying. She said, don't ever say my mother made mistakes because if she didn't do everything she did, she wouldn't be the person she is now helping so many people. Right. So you're right, so, Jim. You're right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I never read two poems. I'm reading another one. I have to. Go ahead. <laughs> everything you so guys good. are saying. I didn't expect this show to go this way, and I'm so happy. This is amazing. Okay, um, so many people out there needed to hear everything you had to say. This poem I wrote called Change Your Choice because we have choices. If we could choose to use, we could choose to change, guys, okay? Mm -hmm. I had a life-changing moment that I knew had to be. The only way to change things was to first start with me. So I looked in the mirror and woke up one day and thought to myself I needed to pray. So I asked God to change me, to help me stay strong, to clean up my mess, to right what's been wrong. I cleaned up my diet. I cleaned up my room. I cleaned up all habits with this old dirty broom. I kept going forward and never looked back. I refused to derail, stayed on the right track. I realized my worth and all that did matter through my selfish behavior, the lives I had shattered. I finally decided at 30 years old, guys, to stop abusing my body, my mind, heart, and soul. My life-changing choice that I had once made, over 33 years now, guys, my debt has been paid. So you read all my thoughts on how to stay clean. It's all or nothing, my friend. There's no in-between. To live or to die is a choice you must make. Your life is not worthless, and you're not a mistake. One day at a time is a slogan you've heard. It works if you work it while applying his word. 
For you to get healthy, for your mind not to fail, escaping reality will keep you in jail. With addictive behavior, sex, drugs, food, or money, substituting right. addictions, isn't that funny? I'm not an addict. Yeah. This too shall pass. I'm not an addict. I'm just an ass. May the good Lord bless and guide you. <laughs> yep. So, Tim. I'm not know, an addict. I'm just an ass. Just an ass. Tim, what you were saying. Oh, that's great. So just that's drugs, great. addiction. Yeah, I mean, that's great. It can be, it can be anything. So, you know, it's anything. 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 anything like that. So, but all right. the thing is, Go ahead. I think that. When you see somebody like, you know, like when I tell you, and I, I was, one time went to, I did a thing in Nashville and it was, and all these guys were meth addicts, you know what I mean? So like in, in meth and free base are probably sort of pretty close, you know, and. Uh, well, one free base was before meth, wasn't it? I know. I'm not sure. I, it's, it is. Yeah. It's both, okay. it's both bad. Okay. But, both um, bad. Yeah. But so the thing is, you know, I was talking to these guys and I just said, listen, I did it. If I can do it, you can do it. You know what I mean? It's, you know, just got to make the choice. You know, and, and you're young. I said, you know, it doesn't matter. You know, I mean, I didn't become a go to paramedic school until I was 34. You know what I mean? And that's when I, and, you know, then I, and so I changed my whole life. You know, I was doing all kinds of jobs. I had, you know, musician, touring, blah, blah, blah. You know, then did a, all kinds of crazy jobs in between. And then I found that job. And this way I found that was like, I was working two jobs in a restaurant because I'm old school. Man's got to bring home money. Got to, fans got to eat. And one of the girls, the waitresses that was there was going to EMT school. And I went, hmm, oldest of 10, taking care of people my whole life? Yeah, let's do that. So, and it's been, it was a cool. phenomenal career. And I was a flight medic for five and a half years. I've been a firefighter. You know, I got a bachelor's degree. I got a master's degree. I mean, I did all this stuff. And that's what happened. It's like, you take an addict and you start taking the addict behavior, like going 100%, you know, like we did with our drugs. But you put in something positive, you're like a dynamo. You just can't be stopped. You're just like, and eh, you know, and you just go and you just get that drive. The same drive you did to when you had to get your drug, you found a way, right? You put that drive in something positive, and all of a sudden everything goes like it changes. And that's what happened for me. And like you know, so now I have a beautiful house, got a pool. I'm two and a half acres. I traveled to Europe three times. Had shows there. I have a record out that's doing well. I've had three solo records. You know, I mean, I've played. I've been in Nashville. I've been on this. Island Hopper stuff. I mean, you know, I, I can't, I can't tell you how good my life is now. You know what I mean? And uh, and I'm healthy. And and this and this, I, I guess you know, doing this stuff and meeting you and stuff. Like you know, we sort of have the same thing. You know, make yep. the good choices. That's what I say. Make good choices. Make good choices. It doesn't have, you know, like in like that's like I said. You know, it's not done to the. You know, it's not happened to the work is done. You gotta. You know, you're gonna have to do something. You know, you can't stand there and just wish it that's to happen. Right. But if you put the drive in and you put the, and, and, and the affirmations in and then you work it, it yeah, sky's right. the limit. Well, I'm going to share something and then I'm going to give the mic to Robert. Okay. So mm -hmm. you'll get a kick out of this guys. I always say God and Elvis helped save my life. All right. <laughs> True story. In 1990, I had beauty salons, so I was making way too much money for being too young. Okay. Right. Right. And I had a black and gold, El Dorado Cadillac with Elvis license plates. Nice. Okay. Oh, my beauty Whoa. salon. Yep. So my beauty salon, all my clients were very wealthy, Jewish women mostly. And one of my clients who's still in my life to this day was the boss of all the judges in Mercer County, the Mercer County municipal boss. I won't say her name. She's retired now. Right. And she used to, I used to meet her at the courthouse. Thank you, God, a lot for lunch. Right. One night, I'm in the car with a girlfriend, and we're copping heroin in Trenton, New Jersey, from one of my African-American young drug dealers, mm -hmm. and he didn't have any dope. He had to get in the back of my car. So we had to go two blocks away to another blah, blah, blah. He gets out. He goes in. He gets our seven bags of heroin, gets back in my car. An unmarked police car was following us because they recognized my Elvis license plates from being in the courthouse a lot and knew I was a friend of the judge. <laughs> oh, called the judge in the middle of the night. He comes to the window and he says, Jerry, judge so-and-so says, get this guy out of your car, get the drugs out of your car, get home, get some rest, get some help. That was my turning wow. point at that moment. I kicked everybody wow. out, went home, got help the next day. So mm -hmm. I always say it was God and Elvis that helped save my life. <laughs> <laughs> what? Well, where's Elvis in all of that? The Elvis license plates. He recognized. Oh, oh, he recognized the Elvis license plates, or he wouldn't have known it was me, man. 
Right, See what I'm right, saying, well, baby? Yeah, there you right. go. I so got now, you. listen, Robert, I'm going to give you the mic now. And then we'll ah. play your final song and we'll talk about that. Robert, everything Tim just said, he talked about himself. I want you to have the same opportunity. Feel free. Talk about whatever it is you want to tell everybody out there. Um, I was never a drug addict. If that's Well, you know, um, I would say that uh, like most people, I've smoked weed, but I've never had uh, alcohol or done hard drugs because I... I just, uh, I grew up with an alcoholic in the house and a smoker, and I, it was two things that I just could not stand. And so given the opportunity to do those things, I, I wasn't interested. Uh, cocaine, I thought with my personality and my hyperactivity that that would be really a mistake. Um, I would have just burned out and flamed out. I mean, my first tour was 13 months, so I would have been dead if I'd have done as much cocaine as everybody else was doing and i'm talking about the outlaws and fog hat uh 13 months just blowing in the wind so to speak six days a week and on the day off you still had to drive 700 miles so it was insane so it was insane but drugs are 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 so easy to are, are a trap and you just, I don't know, I tell kids that uh, if, if you're going to do drugs, there's nobody that's going to stop you but yourself. Right. And, and I, I have a lot of friends around me who have died from, dr from drugs and, and, and some of them still alive. But they can't play anymore. Okay. Um, especially guitar players my age, which is uh, they 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 can't play well anymore. They don't have. They, and the reason is they did drugs too long. Right. Well, you were much and, smarter. And they got their dexterity. You were uh, much smarter than us. So you used yeah. you used music. No, I wouldn't say smarter. Uh -huh. uh, I was lucky. 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 Beautiful. All right, so lucky. why don't why yeah. don't we do this That's now? All. Why don't we play your fourth song and then we're gonna talk about the song, okay guys? Okay, here we go. Yes, ma'am.
Let's talk about that song. <laughs> That's some serious rock right there now. That's, uh, <laughs> so, uh, that was the first song we wrote together. So it's, uh, we wanted something to be hard and upbeat and up tempo. And that's it. Yeah, I like it. Tim? Tim, I can't Are hear you Tim. A, 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 a... Wait. I'm, yeah. I, yeah, I'm Uh-oh. getting a slap back. Yeah, no, yeah. you're okay. You're okay. Yeah. It's okay. Tim, you say what you want to say about the song. Yeah. Oh, well, basically, it's just like, you know, the whole thing about you get it's that slap back thing. That's okay. Just talk. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, the song is basically, you know, you're, you're getting into a situation where, where you have, you have a couple options. And sometimes, sometimes, sometimes the one option you, sh- you just got to get on your knee and you got me praying. There you go. And, and I, I think the thing about living up close to the edge, you know, or, or sometimes you got to take a few punches and know what's right. You know that, I mean, I mean, this, those are just basically metaphors, but like, you know, getting, getting through things and, um, and, and moving on, but then got to get praying. So I guess like, you know, and that's, I mean, I have, I have a, a tattoo on my arm. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah. It says, be the feather on the breath of God. I love it. I love it. I love that. So, and, um, so, and, uh, I guess it's just song, just, just like, you know, it's, it sort of rocks. It sort of tells like, I've, I've been, I've been, I've lived on the edge on a few times. <laughs> So, okay. And, uh, but, you know, somehow I, by a miracle. So we're, we are having a little bit of a little issue here with the sound, but we're, the show's pretty much done anyway, but here's what I want real quick. Tim, tell everyone how they can reach out to you guys, how they can get your music, your website, whatever it is you want to tell them, tell them now. RobertPaulBand.com. Uh, it has uh, video, uh, I mean, has bios, pictures, and all the links to our music. Okay. Yeah. So. And then, like, you know, I'm on Facebook, Tim McGarry, uh, music on Facebook. Instagram, Tim McGarry Official. TikTok. Yeah, all that, all that stuff. So, yeah. Okay. And Robert Paul's Facebook. Yes, uh, Robert Paul uh, Ban uh, forward slash uh, Facebook. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, guys, All right. I J- wanna... just go to Google and search it. There you go. <laughs> go there you go. It's number one. <laughs> it is. Baby. So, I want to thank That's both right. of you for an incredible interview. I mean, more than just. The music, I mean, you guys inspired you. so many people today with your music, with everything you talked about. You guys are off the charts. All right, so listen to me. Reach back out again for Thank you. your second album, all right, because we're going to be doing that one as well. You guys Just rock. Wait. I love you both. We Thank will. you, Gabby. You're amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Jerry. Jerry? Amazing. Who yeah. the hell's Gabby? I uh, yeah, come I on! I want to know you cheating on me. Are you cheating on me? <laughs> I want to know who the heck Gabby is cheating on me. Already? Don't don't worry, baby. She's not as this cute is, as you. <laughs> that's why he doesn't do drugs. That's, that's why. right. I don't need to. <laughs> You're I'm amazing. already high. You're amazing. Listen, my producer's back there cracking up. You made our day. Uh, this was amazing. We will be on. We will be on iHeartRadio. Uh, thank you, sir. Not this Tuesday, but the following, guys. So you'll check them out on iHeartRadio as well. Oh. Download and please oh, share yeah, this cool. show, guys. All right, here we go. Producer, right, 
Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you, Jerry. We love you, Thank man. Thank you, Jerry. We love you, too. We love you. Producer, take us out. Ladies and gentlemen, Jerry Petito. I'm not an addict, I'm just an ass. And in time, this too shall pass. I'm not an addict, I'm just an ass. Jerry Petito taught the class. I'm not an addict, I'm just an ass. Loves the answer, the greener grass. I'm not an addict, I'm just an ass. One day at a time, free at last. When you don't know just what to do. Just what to do, just what to do. If what you're feeling is really true. It's really true. Really Just keep your idea safe and sound. Safe and sound, safe and sound. That's exactly how change is found. Change is found, change is found. I'm not an addict, I'm just an ass. And in time, this too shall pass. I'm not an addict, I'm just an ass. Jerry Petito taught the class. I'm not an addict, I'm just an ass. Loves the answer, the greener grass. I'm not an addict, I'm just an ass. One day at a time, free at last.